Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story Why you shouldn't brag about your illegal activities to people that do not like you much I started renting a house about 5 years ago. I had always lived in apartments and I was excited to finally have some space and privacy. This was ruined within the first week by my jerk neighbor and he made my 4 years at that house miserable. He's in his late 40s or early 50s and despite seeming like a fully functional adult, he has never lived outside of his parents' home. He spends every possible minute cleaning or admiring his truck, so he practically lives in the driveway. When he isn't bragging about some jerk move that he just pulled on someone, he's hitting on the wives and daughters of anyone on the street. I moved in during the winter and started noticing footsteps in my yard in the morning. I found out that he was walking into my yard to look in my windows and see what I was watching slash playing at night. I bought a simple security system and put a few cameras up and this stopped. Then he started mowing my side yard. He would mow it the day after I did. I asked my landlord about this and was told that Mike the creepy neighbor considered it his property and kept arguing about the property line. It is just grass, so I let it go. If I had guests over, he would stare at them and sometimes make comments when I wasn't around to hear him. If I was in the backyard, he would have a reason to be in his backyard. If I was in the house or the front yard, he was in his driveway where he could see in my living room. If I was mowing the yard, he would get out a lawn chair and sit and watch, putting it away as soon as I was done. It came to a head when I caught him sending his dog into my front yard one morning, instead of letting it out into his fenced-in backyard like he normally would. I told him to stay on his side of the property line and he said that he was going to break into my house and smash my cameras and computer. Of course, the cops were called and he got off with a warning. Last fall, I told my landlord that I was going to move out. During the conversation, I found out that Mike was on workers' comp for an injury. I got at work and that he was now bragging about how he was using his workers' comp checks to set up his own under-the-table landscaping business. My landlord, like most of the neighborhood, does not really like Mike. The landlord's son and family lives across the street and Mike has hit on the wife a few times over the years and has started to try to talk to their 17-year-old daughter. I waited for a day when he had his new work truck and trailer with his new name and number on the door and I made a video of him working in his yard and carrying 50 bags of mulch and climbing ladders. I sent videos and pictures to the front department of the workers' comp office. Today, I just found out that he was found guilty of fraud, ordered to pay back every dollar, and may end up in jail. So yeah, hopefully this will escalate to something bigger. As for me, I am happily living in a new place that has a lot of land between me and the neighbors. Next story. Entitled mother puts me on fire with a flare gun, then tries to kill a police dog. So this story happened on July 8, 2020. Me and my dad have decided that we will go shooting at a nearby range. We have a gas pistol, which in our country you do not need a license to have. Now this pistol can only shoot plank or gas cartridges that allows us to shoot a flare, pyro, etc. So we went there, shot a few pyros and flares and then when I just loaded a new flare, about 20 feet away from us appeared our entitled lady and her humble kid. The kid looked like 11 and Karen was about 40. So they approach us from the back and I hear the typical, excuse me, 
and I just tell myself in the head, Oh god, it's happening. And the conversation follows. Yes? Could you please let my kid shoot? Now, we have some restrictions about guns. One, you must be at least 15 to shoot the gun. Two, for you to be able to shoot the explosive from the gun, you must have paperwork, which my dad has. So I tell her I'm sorry, but I can't let him shoot. He's too young for that. No, 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 he's not. He's 17. Mom, let them go. We will rent one right there. And do you even have the paperwork to shoot explosive from it? No, but you do, right? Dad rolls his eyes at this. Karen gets angry and yells, Just give me the gun. No, and you don't even have the paperwork. Fine, I'll take it myself. She grabs a gun from my hand and pulls the trigger. The flare went off right on my t-shirt. I put the fire down and shout for security. When Karen realizes what she did, she grabs a flare box and bolt from the range go into the forest. Her kid just stands there frozen. Then comes a security guard. He asks me, are you okay? Yeah, just the shirt is a bit ashed. Where did you go? She went into the forest. Well, this range has to our pleasure a kennel. There are two dogs which are trained to find guns and people. This is because the people have been trying to sneak out with guns or ammo. My dad is an off-duty officer, so he gets the dog and the security guard and they go to find her. Her kid and I go behind them. After about 15 minutes of searching, the security guard spots her hiding in a bush. Look, she's right there. He unleashes a dog and it runs to the bush where Karen is. And just before the bush, Karen raises and shouts, Stay away, you jerk! And she shoots the dog. The dog howled in pain as the explosive pyro exploded in its face. The security guard yells, Hands up! Karen is right then tackled to the ground, apprehended and later charged for assault, stealing and injuring a police dog. At the court, she gets a total of 15 years in prison. Me and my dad then returned home, grabbed an air gun, and we went shooting tin cans until it was evening. And that was the end of it. Next story. Entitled Mother Threatens My Job, I was a jerk in response but have no regrets. This happened long before Homo sapiens Karen was taxonomically described, but this county could well be named Karen Company for all the arrogance and entitlement this affluent enclave is renowned for. A lot of people here just suck. I taught part-time at the local community college, which means I only get paid for the time I teach. Extracurriculars are at my discretion. The semester's over, but I had to pick something up. I went to say hi to the department secretary whom I was friends with. She says, I know it is not your responsibility, but would you please contact this kid who's interested in taking the beginning class but wants some information? Frank's not getting back to him as usual and I feel bad for him. Okay, sure. Have him email me and I will do what I can. He emails me that he's a high school student in a program that allows him to take one college class. He's trying to decide between astronomy and my class. How would I call him so he could ask questions? I don't want him to have my phone number and I started the job with long hours where I wasn't getting home until around midnight. Plus, if he's this demanding now, what's he going to be like in class? I emailed him the details class syllables that lays out the entire semester with every assignment and the due dates listed. I hated instructors who couldn't stick to the syllables, so I always made sure mine were accurate. I tell him to feel free to email me any further questions. He responds he really needs to talk to me without elaborating why. I email him back that the syllables is comprehensive and self-explanatory, but email me any specific questions. And I ended with, here is some friendly advice. It is a little rude to keep insisting on a private phone call after someone has expressed a clear preference for email. The next night, I get home exhausted and just wanting to go to bed. Of course, there is an email, but it is from his mother. 
It is not rude to ask for a phone call, but wise. My son wasn't rude. You were. You lack self-respect and intelligence. I will be forwarding this to your department chair. Dr. So-and-so. You're unfit to teach and I will make sure you don't anymore. This is a bullet point version. It was long and poorly written. Laughable, really. I wasn't angry per se, but just annoyed enough to not let it slide. It's a character flaw I try not to indulge, but sometimes I just can't help it. I wrote, please stop with your pity threats. It is laughable and you're embarrassing yourself. If my job is contingent on the approval from an obnoxious parent like you, I will quit. I'm on summer vacation. I am not getting paid for this. I didn't have to respond to your son at all, but did so as a courtesy. Under no circumstances whatsoever do I owe anyone a phone call. As for my self-respect, I have enough not to cater to a parent with an inflated sense of entitlement and self-importance. I do not care if your son takes my class or not. It makes no difference to me. I have no shortage of students wanting to take my class. Then comes a gratuitous, somewhat cheap shot I couldn't resist once I thought of it. Your son will be better off taking astronomy, where he will learn he's not the center of the universe. And you should take it with him. The kid probably did not deserve that, but oh well. His mother did. Edit. At the next semester's faculty, I apologized to the chair if I caused any problems, but she irked me. He laughed and said, I could tell, I could tell, impressive. He said it was no big deal, they get angry parents all the time. He noticed mother and son had different last names, so she was probably the stepmother who pushed him about Colin and took it out on me when I told him he was rude. He read the emails and could see I was trying to help him. The secretary said, I am so sorry I asked you to contact him. You went out of your way and that was your reward. I told her that's okay, I kinda had fun with it, which made her burst out laughing. Next story. Landlord tries to keep us in a mold house. We get his place condemned by the city. I've lived in a lot of awful places throughout my college years, but this was one of the big ones. I had recently moved into a house with two other girls. It wasn't the best house but seemed to look okay for a college apartment. One of the girls had a friend who had lived there before and told us that the landlord was sexist and kind of a jerk, but usually meant well, and it was decent rent. I'll be referring to him as dummy landlord. We were all broke, so we decided to sign a lease. I should have realized the warning signs when the dummy landlord wanted to sign it in a big boy's after he had just eaten dinner there. And the leasing agreement looked like he chopped it up from the other pictures of lease agreements on Google. We also found this apartment as an ad off of Craigslist. Things were fine for a few months, I was living alone until the next school year would start. And I wasn't home all of the time since I would go over to my boyfriend's a lot and sleep over. It was a split house with an apartment in a basement and hours on the first floor. It was not long until I started to notice things happening. We'd get a good amount of rain, since we were in the Midwest by some big local lakes, and it was springtime. We'd get a good amount of water, and the concrete steps to the house would constantly fill up with water I had to jump over, and it would disappear overnight. It also started to get a little bit of a musty smell in the house, and I had started coughing and sneezing all the time, but I did not know why. Soon the other girls moved in, and we started having some difficulties with the dummy landlord. He wouldn't tell us when he'd come over to check on the property. He said he did this to keep up on looks and mow the loan, but he did it way too often for any of us to be okay with. He would argue with us about having a copy of our own lease. He'd yell at us, to give him rent payments in cash, especially before going to his cabin up north with his girlfriend. But the biggest of all was that we were having problems with mold, and he did not care. For a while we hadn't talked to the people in the basement apartment, 
until everyone started having problems with the dummy landlord. We'd hear them arguing and yelling down below about as often as we would upstairs. But they were in a hell hole. Everything they owned had mold growing on it. They had bugs everywhere, earwigs, beetles, ants, you name it. They were constantly throwing away their clothes, dishes, furniture, even their college papers and homework, since it was all growing mold. They spent money on plastic bins to hold most of their important items. But even those will get moldy. We also found out that they were supposed to have another roommate down below. But she couldn't live there from her allergies to mold after signing a lease agreement. We also found out that dummy landlord verbally abused her and her mother on the phone. To the point where they were crying and she couldn't get out of the lease. She ended up paying for the two places every month so that she didn't have to live there. Well, because he wouldn't let her break her lease. And he simply did not care. Upstairs wasn't as bad as a basement. But it wasn't good either. All of us were coughing more and more each month. We would wake up coughing in the middle of the night and we were getting really sick. We tried to air out the house as best as we could. But nothing helped. I ended up getting a severe case of strep throat so bad that every swallow I took made my eyes water and made me verbally make noise from the pain. I tried to ask the doctor I went to if he could prove that this was from the mold later but he unfortunately couldn't give me a solid statement on it. Me being a vocal, neutral, good person who was also going to school to be an architect tried to explain to him what was going on on this house. No air circulation. His concrete steps and foundation walls were not sealed, so all of the water I'd have to jump over was most likely going into the basement walls, causing most of the mold. We also found a few areas on the roof that needed patching, since we noticed some leaks among other things. And the basement apartment had cheap patio doors for their only mint of entrance and exit, which would constantly be up against water when it rained, adding to the problem. Oh, smart dummy landlord decided that we were all just girls complaining about silly things that didn't mean anything. So he brushed us off and said we were fine, even though I had told him that I was learning about these things in school and knew what I was talking about. He wouldn't let us out of the lease as hard as we tried. So all of us girls in both apartments decided we would get out if it was the last thing we did. Then began researching all of the legal apartment and tenant information for our state and city to get out. We were paying for attorney's fees. I started taking pictures of the mold upstairs and downstairs that we could find. Talking with several different city staff, the police, and started compiling this into a nice document. After deferring my rent payment to get a copy of the lease agreement from Dummy Landlord, we could finally take a look at our legal document and use that further to get out. We were also working with another landlord at a renting company in town, who I will call the good landlord. He was thankfully doing his best to get us out of that hole and into his apartment. Through him, we'd get all the legal ins and outs of the renting business, and he would help us find a loophole. Then after months and months of arguments, money and researching, we found it. If we sent in a mold test to a research lab, and it was over the limit of what was inhabitable, we could get out. It was safe to say we had a pretty good idea it was over the limit. The tests came back a few days later and we sent that off to the city, including our nice document of pictures, statements and leasing agreements. Not even four hours went by but we got a call from the city. Our house was so full of mold that we were to move out of the apartment within 24 hours and it was to be condemned. We were ecstatic. All of that hard work had finally paid off. Although it was horrifying to know that the mold count was so high, 
The mold researcher, who had been in the business for more than 30 years, had not once seen a place with a higher mold count than this house. Yes, this included black mold. Fast forward to us happily packing up in our house, all of our parents getting us out together, us moving into the apartment that good landlord kept open for us to move into, and poor old dummy landlord sopping in our driveway as we happily stack boxes into cars, complaining that he should have paid more attention and listened to us. This was his girlfriend's property, and she's going to dump him. We all took a picture the next day, smiling in front of the condemned signs. It is still one of my favorite pictures to this day. Serves him right for not listening to his tenants. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.